Welcome to section 7.5. Today's objective is to graph square roots and be able to graph cube root functions as well. So we want to start off with a graph of a simple radical function. We're going to start off with the graph of y equals the square root of x. So to graph this, we want to create an x and y table. Now the values that we select for the x values should be numbers that we think we can take the square root of them easily. So we don't want to use numbers like 13 or 26. We want to use numbers that we can take the square root of them easily. So I can start out with numbers like 0, 1, 4, and 9. These all numbers have perfect square roots. So that makes it easy to figure out what the y is. So we know if we plugged in 0 in here for x, the square root of 0 is just 0. The square root of 1 is simply 1. The square root of 4 would be 2. And the square root of 9 would be 3. So at this point, we just graph our points. So we start off here at 0, 0. We go up to 1, 1. We start over here to 4, over 2. And then we go all the way to 9 and go up 3. We connect our points. And that is the graph of y equals the square root of x. So the functions won't always be as simple as a y equals the square root of x. In the case that more things are going on, there's a few more steps that we need to take to graph that function. But the first step is the same as the first one that we showed you. We want to take the graph of y equals a times the square root of x, and then incorporate the numbers that are along in the equation to shift horizontally or vertically. But first, let's graph the y equals a times square root of x, which in this occasion is y equals negative 3 times the square root of x. So we want to create an x and y table. And in that table, once again, I want to use numbers that I will easily be able to find the square root of. So I'll do 0, 1, 4, and 9. Now the square root of 0 is 0, and 0 times 3 will give me 0. The square root of 1 is 1 times negative 3 will be negative 3. The square root of 4 is 2 times negative 3 will be negative 6. And the square root of 9 is 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So I'm going to graph these points. I have one point at 0, 0, one point at 1, negative 3, another point at 4, negative 6, and last point at 9, negative 9. Okay, so this is our function for the graph of y equals negative 3 times the square root of x. But that's not our final equation. The last step we need to do is incorporate this h and this k. So we have to shift the graph h units horizontally and k units vertically. Now when I look at my equation here, I can see that h is going to equal 2 and k is going to equal 1. Remember, it, it's negative h up here. So if this number is already negative, it becomes positive. So this means that I'm going to shift every point 2 in this direction and 1 in this direction. And I'll use stars to represent these points so you can make the distinction. So I'll start off with my point 0, 0. So this point is going over 2 and up 1. This point is going over 2 and up 1. Every point over 2 up 1, over 2, up 1. So my graph will be this dotted one. So once again, we graph the y equals a times the square root of x, and then incorporated the h and k for the shifts. Now let's look at an example of a cube root function. So if we're given a cube root function, the steps are very similar to a square root. We want to figure out what the graph of y equals a times the cube root of x looks like, which in this example is going to be 3 times the cube root of x. Now, I wasn't specific about how many points I wanted for the square root function, but for cube root functions, I want at least 5 points. I want 5 ordered pairs. So when I make my x and y table, I want 5 points. Now, this is differs from the square root function because for the square root, none of these x's could be negative. But we know that negative numbers can have cube roots. 
So I'll do zero to start, one, and negative one, and then eight and negative eight. These all have perfect cube roots. So the perfect cube root of zero is zero. Zero times three will give me zero. Cube root of one is one. One times three gives me positive three. And if I plug in negative one here, I'll get negative three. The cube root of eight is two, and two times six is six, and this will be negative six. So I want to graph these points. I have zero, zero, one, comma, three, one, comma, negative three, over eight and up six, to the left eight and down six. So now what I want you all to do is to take out your calculators, pause the video, and graph this function here, because I want you to be able to see the curve, and you may not be able to see it as quickly with me graphing it out. So pause the video, take a second, and graph these on your calculator. Okay, if you graph these in your calculator, you'll notice that these graphs curve. And the curve should look like this. Now, we're not finished. Second step, similar to the square root. We need to figure out what h and k are and shift accordingly. In this example, h is going to be negative 2. In this example, k is going to be negative 1. So that means that every point is going down 1 and to the left 2. Once again, I'll use stars to show this. We'll start off with this 0 here. So this one is going to the left 2 and down 1. To the left 2, down 1. To the left 2, and down 1. This point here is going to the left 2, down 1. And to the left 2, down 1. So our function, and I'll use dotted lines once again, comes up and through here. In this chapter, we've introduced the domain and range. Now, I've said to you before that domain is the possible input values, or the x values. Now, the range is the possible output values, or in this example, the y values. So let's look at this first example here. So we want to know what are the possible x values of this graph. And I'm talking about the red line. So the possible x values we know start here. There are no x values this way that we can use. So the domain is x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Any number greater than, equal, greater than or equal to the 2 works out here. Now the range is the y values. So the range here you can see y does not go higher then y equals 1. So for y, the range is anything that's less than or equal to 1. And that is the domain and range for this graph. Okay? So for this next one, once again, what are the possible input values? Well, for both of these, the domain and the range are going to be all real numbers. Because this red line is curved, but it's going to continue on forever and forever. And same thing for the range. All real numbers. In the following word problem, we are given a function for life expectancy. That function is given to us as function of t, which is the number of years since 1940, equals 1.78 times the square root of t minus 0 0.3 plus 62.7. Now this is a function that will allow you to graph in your calculator, and if you did graph it, you would end up with the graph you're shown here. So now what we need to do is be able to look at this graph and figure out what's going on. The question asks us, in what year was the life expectancy at birth 75.7 years? So we know t, or number of years since 1940 will be this line and 
life expectancy will be this axis. So, right here we have 100 years. This would be 50. So this would be 75 here. We draw a line. We say intersects right here. This has to be 50. Remember that T is number of years since 1940. So, and we're estimating now. I realize this isn't perfect. But 1940 plus 1950 means that in 1990, the life expectancy at birth was around 75.7 .7 years. All right, that's going to be our lesson for today. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.